All right, welcome back. Back with another review here, this time for week number four of the South American Regional DPC. Uh, before I get into it, if you enjoy this video and want to see more, feel free to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, as I'll be posting stuff like this for the remainder of the season. And as we get to the end of it, I'm going to start making previews for the major, if that does end up taking place, because we have not heard a single thing, and it doesn't sound like the players have either about the major. So, anyways, uh, yeah, starting off with this review, going to be going over the matches, starting off on January 6th. We have Beast Coast taking down No Ping, uh, looking good. Beast Coast still in this at this point of the season in their prime. No Ping taking a pretty big slip down the standings these past couple weeks. Haven't been able to find their footing since around the beginning of the DPC. Uh, January 7th, we had Thunder Predator uh, taking down Kings. Uh, Thunder Predator just continuing to look like probably the most dominant team in this region so far. Um, they're winning their games in short amount of times in very dominant fashion. They look very comfortable in their drafts. They look very comfortable uh, with the strategies that they execute. And it doesn't seem like anyone in the region has figured them out yet. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see when Beast Coast and Thunder Predator do end up facing off. They have not met yet. Um, but later on in the week, we will see the Beast Coast might not be as consistent as Thunder Predator has been. Later that day, we have Infamous losing, I mean, Infamous taking down Beast Coast 2 to 1. Now, this was a pretty close series. Of course, it wasn't a 2 0 or anything like that, but it shows that Beast Coast can be inconsistent. They can bleed now and then. We saw this last year in the DPC, uh, specifically in Season 2 when they didn't exactly finish first place, but they still made it to the major, and it's looking like that's pretty likely right now. And it is the same, technically the same team that is ahead of them as last season, uh, which is the former no ping stack that is now on Thunder Predator. And uh, yeah. I don't really think anyone saw this coming, but upsets are possible. They have happened. And Infamous now, looking like they could maybe catch up. Uh, Beast Coast would need to lose pretty much the rest of their series at this point if uh, Infamous or uh, Infamous or APU King of Kings want to actually catch them, which feels unlikely. But again, keep in mind, Beast Coast still has yet to play against Thunder Predator, which means there might be a likely loss in there. As for the rest of it, it might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, moving on to January 9th, we have Lava taking down No Ping 2-0. So again, talking about No Ping kind of slipping down the ranks as the weeks goes on. And then finally, we have Hokori taking SG Esports down 2-0. Uh, SG Esports 0-5 to this point. They have pulled up one individual game win so far. And other than that, it's been a pretty miserable run so far for them. They're looking like they are most certainly bound for the lower division at this point. Speaking of, taking a look at the standings now, again, Thunder Predator leading the way, 5-0, and I don't think they've lost an individual game here so far either. Uh, again, they look dominant, they look very comfortable in their drafts, they look very comfortable in their strategies, and I'm really, really excited to see how they do at the first major, assuming that they make it. Of course, they aren't uh, technically locked in, but they're going to make the major. Uh, following that, we have Beast Coast, who's 4-1 so far. Of course, that being their first loss to Infamous. We'll have to see if they are managing to uh, swing back into their prime before the major starts, if they can manage to upset Thunder Predator. And I think saying upset isn't a stretch at this point. Uh, again, with how good Thunder Predators looked and Beast Coast, you know, being the team that uh, has their very high highs, but at the same time has a little bit of inconsistency to them. Uh, we'll have to see how that series goes. Next up, tied for third place, we have King of Kings staying in the same spot from last week. Uh, we have Infamous moving up to third place, uh, one spot, of course, with that win. Uh, they've really turned things around. After the first three weeks, they were one and two, looking like one of the teams that was going to have to be fighting for their lives uh, when it comes to avoiding relegation. And right now, they're looking like they're pretty comfortably away from that. And it's very likely that uh, they're going to be sticking around in the upper division for the next tour. Uh, following that in fifth place, we have Hakori and Lava sitting at a two and three record as well. Uh, and then we have Noping at one and four in seventh place, dropping two spots. Uh, I believe during week three, they were third or fourth place. They've been dropping a lot ever since my first review. And then finally, SG Esports still in last place as they were last week. Uh, they're 0 and five to this point. Again, only one individual game win so far for them. So Right now, it's looking like No Ping and SG Esports are going to be the two teams getting relegated to the lower division. Of course, No Ping started off pretty strong. I wouldn't say it was very strong, but it was a good start for them. And uh, ever since then, it's just felt like every single team that they've played have, has had them figured out. So, yeah, we'll have to see. They can still manage to pull off a couple wins. They still have two more series left. They need to win both of those if they want to uh, avoid any sort of tiebreakers. Now taking a look at some stats uh, across this entire DPC so far, there have been 44 matches played, uh, 24 of those are radiant wins, 20 of them dire, and for first pick and last pick, 20 wins on first pick and 24 wins on last pick. For top heroes, Abaddon, 8-1, uh, a hero that we haven't been seeing all that much in a bunch of different regions, but has been working out very, very well in South America's upper division. 
Another one that's been working out, Clockwork, 5-0. and uh, Again, not a hero that ends up getting picked up very much. Only five games out of 44, but has looked really good when it does get picked. And then finally, uh, we have Bloodseeker and Shadow Demon, who are 5-1. and one. As for the worst heroes, Brewmaster leads the way 0-5. Oh we then have Io, who is 3-10. And, and Io has been a really polarizing hero, because for most regions and most divisions, he's usually topping, or whatever it is, it um, is usually leading the charge for most band. But then when we see it in practice, it usually doesn't have the high win rate that you would come to expect for a hero that gets banned as often as it is. Now, the way that the hero works, this, this hero has been a uh, first phase ban for pretty much like a couple of years at this point, more than a couple of years. But uh, I know some teams in Western Europe are starting to figure out that maybe the hero isn't as good as teams are hyping it up to be. Uh, Void Spirit, two and six at the bottom there. For most band, we have Weaver with 30, Monkey King with 23, and Invoker with 20. So actually some pretty low band counts considering how many matches have been played in comparison to some other regions. Uh, I think South America's band phase is a lot more diverse in general. And again, Io not showing up on this top three here as it normally would on some other lists. Um, for top GBM teams right now, Beast Coast leads the way. Again, even though they're not first place, they do lead the way. They've got some good stats to back up their 4-1 record. Uh, a big reason why I think that Thunder Predator isn't leading in the GPM and XPM uh, leaderboards is because they win their games a lot quicker and they handle the teams a lot more comfortably. And so usually when you have high GPM, high XPM, you usually have a little bit longer games and you start to ac accumulate that big XPM and GPM. But with Thunder Predator, they're ending their games so quickly that they don't really have that opportunity. Following that in second place, we have King of Kings with 2344 and then Thunder Predator with 2253. So again, speaking about how often they end their games quite early, that is still quite an impressive uh, GPM score. For top XPM, we have Beast Coast with 2895, King of Kings with 8, 2836, and then Thunder Predator with 2738. And then leading the way for King uh, KDA, uh, we have Thunder Predator with 6.86. Uh, we then have Beast Coast with 3.87 and King of Kings with 3.84. So the same three teams showing up here, uh, even though Infamous is technically tied for third place, I don't think they've exactly been up to par with the, the other top three teams. They did just beat Beast Coast, obviously. But overall, throughout the entire season, uh, I don't think they've been nearly as good as the top three teams in this division so far. And finally, now looking at some individual players. Uh, for top GPM, we have Hector with 748, uh, Benny with 720, and Pakaz with 703. Uh, those same three players show up in the same order for top XPM as well. Uh, Hector with 747, we have Benny with 718, and Pakaz with 708. And then for top KDA, Pakaz leads the way with a 10.65. Very impressive KDA for him. He's been having a very, very good season so far. Uh, we have Dark Mago with 10.1, and Oscar with 9.4. So yeah, all around, it's looking like things should end up shaking out to be what we were expecting before the season started. You know, uh, SG Esports near the bottom and Thunder Predator and Beast Coast near the top. They do have that unexpected loss from Beast Coast to Infamous earlier on, but I don't think it should realistically affect their chances of making it to the Major. They feel pretty locked in. Uh, for the other teams to catch them, they would have to win the remainder of their matches, which is possible, obviously, but it would also require Beast Coast to lose the remainder of their matches, so... We'll have to see how it goes. You guys can let me know what you guys think about this uh, region, this division, in the comments down below. Now moving on to the lower division, starting off on January 6th, we have Balrogs taking down Unknown 2-0. Again, things just going from bad to worse for Unknown. Uh, they have yet to get a single individual win to this point. It has been pretty miserable for them. Infinity taking down Omega. Infinity showing that they are one of the most dominant, if not the most dominant team in this division so far. They are just absolutely handling teams completely opposite to Unknown. I don't think they've even dropped a game so far. They have looked that good so far. So uh, they are definitely one of the front runners to make it out of this division. Following that, January 8th, we have Wolf uh, taking down Interitus 2-0. And January 9th, we have Gorilla Pride taking down Interitus 2-0 as well. So, rough couple of days there for Interitus for sure. And then finally, just earlier today, just a couple hours ago, we had Infinity taking down Wolf 2-0. So, every single match that we've had in the past week has been a 2-0. And uh, yeah, Infinity right now leads the way 6-0. They are technically not 100%... Uh, secure to make it to the upper division. They're not secure top two. There is still a scenario where Balrogs or G Pride could technically catch up to them since they have two series remaining. But they're 6 0 so far. They have yet to drop a game. It looks pretty unlikely at this point that Infinity ends up actually dropping it. 
As for the other two teams chasing them, uh, I believe their only series losses are actually to Infinity, so they have yet to play against each other, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Again, only two teams make it out of this division, and we have three teams right now who are really uh, stretching themselves ahead of the rest of the pack. In fourth place, we have Interitus, who is two and three, tied with Omega, who is also two and three so far, moving up one spot. And other than that, the entire standing stays pretty much the same from last week. Uh, we have Wolf in sixth place, who are two and four so far. Inverse, who is one and four, and Unknown, zero oh and five again, unknown, having a pretty rough go of it so far. For stats, uh, there have been a total of 46 matches played in total in this division, uh, 27 of them being Radiant wins, so Radiant much, much more favored here than Dire in this division specifically. Uh, for first and last pick, it's a little bit closer, 24 to 22. Uh, for top heroes, we have Kunkka, who is 10 and 3 so far. Uh, Kunkka has been pretty popular pretty much everywhere so far this season. Uh, Lena, 6 and 2, same thing for her. And Tusk, 8 and 3. Uh, again, Tusk is similar to Clockwork in the upper division. Not a hero we've been seeing a whole lot of in this division. Uh, I think Nigma was playing it at the start of the season when they were really having their struggles. But uh, it's been looking pretty good in South America's lower division. Uh, for worst heroes, we have Legion Commander, who is 1-7. And, and if you recall watching my previous South America uh, reviews, uh, the lower division, one of their most banned heroes was Legion Commander, even though her win rate was this bad. And right now it seems like they've stopped picking and banning the hero so far. Her uh, amount of games and amount of bans has been pretty stagnant since those first couple weeks. Uh, we then have Skywrath Mage, same thing with him, although he wasn't banned nearly as much as Legion 1 and 6. And Gyrocopter, 5 and 13. He's been picked 18 times, uh, so roughly a third of the games, a little bit more than that, and uh, has had a pretty miserable win rate to show for it. For most banned, we have Weaver leading the way with 27. Mars leading the way with 20, or uh, following that with 26. Uh, Mars been a pretty popular hero in South America in general. And then Templar Assassin with 26 as well. For top GPM teams, again, Infinity leading the way with 24.30. Uh, G Pride following that with 23.74. And then Ball Rogs with 22.83. Uh, we have the same three teams for the remainder of the list, just in different order. G Pride leads in XPM with a, a very, very impressive 29.87. Then Infinity with 29.31 and Balrogs with 27.11. So a pretty big gap there between Balrogs and G Pride, dis despite the fact they're right next to each other on the standings. And for top KDA, Infinity leads the way with 6.08, G Pride with 4.5, and Balrogs with 4.13. And now, ending things off with individual players. Uh, for top GPM, we have Parker leading the way with 767. Uh, Burna Burna with 731. And now with 668. Oh, 686. Excuse me. Um, for top XPM, Parker leads the way with 788. Tano with 763. And now with 758. And then for top KDA, we have PP leading the way with 11.91. Parker with 984. And now with 11, uh, 857. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. Again, not a lot of movement on the board when it comes to the standings here. Uh, it's looking like Infinity is one of the teams locked in for the upper division. Unknown is looking like the team that is locked for elimination. But other than that, we don't exactly know yet who's going to be the other team joining them. It's looking like it might be inverse. Um, but uh, for the top part, we don't know if Balrogs or G-Pride are going to end up making it. I'm really excited to see which one does because both teams have been, have been pretty impressive. Uh, if I had to choose one to be more biased about, I think G-Pride has looked really, really impressive, specifically their carry player. Again, if you've been watching my reviews for South America, I've really, really enjoyed watching now on G-Pride. I think he's a really underrated player, and I think if ever there is a big roster shuffle in South America and he gets sp split apart from his team, he is most certainly going to get picked up by a team in the upper division if they don't end up making it there. He is a very impressive player, at least from what I've seen. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. Join the Discord. Again, it's in the link in the description. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow with my review of China's Upper Division.